influenced by the media mob and big tech mob. They know that Biden is not up to this job. They know he's a cognitive mess. He's failing on policy, failing on facts, failing to even articulate a coherent vision on keeping America safe and secure. And he was too busy to get his ass out of the chair and get back to work this weekend or stay at work today. Here with Reaction Florida Senator Marco Rubio. You're on the Intel community, Senator. I read, uh, I went back and looked at a lot of your tweets. You had you warned them this would fail. You told them exactly what would happen. They ex ignored everything that you told them uh, and others. And the next step is you predict this will now once again be a safe haven for, for groups like Al Qaeda moving forward. Yeah, Sean, and not just did I tell them, but there was a bipartisan warning, okay? You look at the intelligence, you look at everything before us, it was clear that not, not only was the worst case scenario out there, it was the likeliest outcome that was going to happen. And we kept insisting, what is the plan if this happens? What is the plan? And they arrogantly and they smugly ignored it. They ignored everyone who was warning them because they're the experts, they know everything, and now we've seen the consequences. There are two things now to keep in mind. Number one is Joe Biden was elected promising competence, the return of normalcy, the return of expertise to foreign policy, and we see that they can't even execute on something like this and ignore the people who know something about it. That does encourage people like China, countries like China and other adversaries not just to go out and try to undermine confidence in America, but actually test America and think they can get away with it. And the other is something that the Pentagon's already saying. And we've already been saying for close to nine months. The biggest problem here is going to be now that Al Qaeda is coming back to, have, to, to, to Afghanistan. Let there be no doubt. They are coming back. They will reconstitute. They will pose a threat again. And this administration has no plan whatsoever to prevent that from happening. China's involved, uh, sorry, Russia's involved in cyber attacks against this country. Then they get a waiver for a pipeline and, and they get a summit with Joe Biden. China is threatening our military bases. They're threatening Japan's military bases. They're threatening to take over an independent sovereign country, Taiwan. They're calling it reunification. And they're lecturing America on human rights in Anchorage. And our ever pathetically weak Secretary of State is allowing them to do so with no pushback. So my question is, why wouldn't the Chinese think that they can take or reunify their term with Taiwan? Foreign policy is a very tough business, and a lot of it is not made, I know it's not made in the parlors of the capitals of the cities, it's not made in these think tanks, it's not made by the commentary class. It is hard-nosed nation states making a decision, what can we get away with, and if we do this, this, what's going to happen to us? And right now, with Joe Biden in the White House, our adversaries are, are going to conclude that there are things they can get away with and they can do, because this White House is not strong, they're not prepared, they're not even competent, and I fear what that means. This is a big, big problem. Isn't it, it wasn't the difference we're going to compare. I know some people were so offended and, you know, their daily outrage at Donald Trump's tweeting. But um, Donald Trump was able to get trade deals that nobody thought possible because everybody believed that a trade war would come and that he would follow through. Our enemies knew, and for example, look at ISIS. He defeated the caliphate. You know, Biden, Obama were incapable of dealing with any such threat. They don't seem to have, there's no belief that Joe Biden will lift a finger to stop anything here, which means these nations, their geopolitical, geographical ambitions are going to be pursued and likely they will be successful. Yeah, look, the war in Afghanistan had to come to a conclusion. This couldn't go on forever, but it had to be done the right way, not this way. And what this way reveals is you can get away with things with this administration, and, and they're not going to take it seriously. They're not going to know what to do about it. And I look back at the Soleimani strike, and it was widely condemned. It was called murder and execution, all kinds of people attacking President Trump for doing it. I assure you, I assure you, 100 percent, I know for a fact that it impacted the psychology of the Iranian regime and, and of the group that Soleimani headed. It had an impact on them. But they feared them. Trump. They feared him, and they believed he was capable of following through on his threats. That's number one. Well, and, 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 and that's exactly what a lot about foreign policy is all about, is what do your adversaries believe they can get away with? Not what you're saying, not what you're writing. What do they think you will do? And the Soleimani strike sent the message it was important to do. The, the guy was a smug guy that would walk around, fly around with impunity. He thought he was untouchable until he wasn't. And it had an impact. There's no fear of that happening under Joe Biden. None. But the Trump plan was based on conditions on the ground and a genuine fear that, like Donald Trump wiped out the caliphate, 
that they would be, the Taliban would be wiped out similarly if they dared to try this if Donald Trump was president. This didn't happen on Trump's watch. This happened on Biden's watch while Biden was on vacation and couldn't bother to even take time to deal with it. <laughs> Because they, they operated under assumptions that were completely ridiculous. The assumption was, well, what if the Afghans stand up and fight and, and, and really push back? If you make those assumptions, yeah, they could have held on for another six months or a year. But all the indications were that as soon as the U.S. announced they were leaving, police officers would abandon post, regular armed forces would abandon post, and leaders would abandon the country. That is exactly what happened. That's what they were told. That's what they were warned would happen. They didn't care. And now we see the consequences of it. All right, Senator, thank you for being with us. What are the consequences of